Hi everybody. Okay, welcome to this drawing exercise, another drawing exercise where we'll be this time exploring the subconscious mind. Um, usually when we sit down to draw, it's usually um, to communicate something figurative. So we'll be either looking at a still life set up or an object or maybe a person or maybe we're drawing from photographs and memories so we use drawing in a sort of figurative way to communicate ideas usually and that's that's really valid okay so the, the drawing exercise today is a, a bit of a kind of two-parter if you like the first part of it we're, we're going to go completely and totally abstract um, it's called auto drawing. You may be familiar with the term, but it is a, exactly what it says on the tin. It relies you just to to automatically respond to whatever is in your head and just allowing your mind to communicate with your hand and to feel your way around the paper. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate. I've got myself some A3 paper here. I'm just going to take one sheet of it and I'm going to tape it down to my board. corners because once I get started I don't really want the paper to be moving about okay and all I've got here is a stick of black compressed charcoal a stick of white compressed charcoal and a graphite stick okay so all I'm really going to do to, to sort of prepare for this is as I was suggesting earlier is to kind of take a journey inwards so in order to do that what I'm going to try and do is to kind of tune out of my kind of immediate surroundings um, which is hard to do because obviously there's noise from outside there's you know you might have family members um, that are vying for your attention all the time but so you do need to be in a fairly quiet space if you can Okay, so it just really requires you just to take a few minutes just to slowly slow your breathing down, take a few deep breaths in and out. In. And out and just allow your eyes to either close gently close or just kind of allow your gaze to fall into the middle distance so you're not really looking at your your paper or what your hands doing so you're just trying to kind of tune out of your surroundings and into your subconscious mind okay so when you feel ready and you feel really relaxed, I want you to pick up your, your compressed charcoal. And then when you feel ready, just put the, the charcoal down on the paper and just let your hand respond So you're just taking a line for a walk. I'm going to use this side. And I'm 
I know I'm sort of going off the paper here, but that's okay. I'm just not being guided by anything other than my subconscious mind. Okay, I'm going to bring that to a finish there. Okay, so at this point... Oh, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> okay, at this point, again, I'm going to do a similar thing. So I'm, I'm being completely non-judgmental about my, whatever I produce here. It's not meant to be hung in a gallery or seen by anybody else. It's a pure exercise. Um, and it's just allowing your um, subconscious creativity to come to the fore. Okay. So again, I'm going to use the same method of some deep breathing. And this time I have my white compressed charcoal. And I'm just basically going to do exactly the same thing as I did before. I'm just going to take take it around the page. And I don't have any sort of plan for it. So I'm just letting that white line intersect with the black marks that I've made I'm using the side of it as well okay so I'll just bring that to a finish on there okay so again completely non-judgmental about it it's it doesn't mean anything it doesn't look like anything it's not supposed to okay so we're going to go again, but this time I've just got an ordinary graphite stick. I think this is a 6B, so it's a fairly soft graphite stick. And all I'm going to do is do exactly the same thing, okay? So I'm just going to allow this to travel around the page just purely of its own volition. And okay it's being moved by my hand but I've got no idea what what I'm doing I don't have a design I don't have a, anything in my mind about it okay so at this point I'm just going to take a bit of a breather again I could go and make a cup of tea maybe walk away for 10 minutes and come back because the second part to this, we're going to change it again very slightly. Okay. Um, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on this. So you can see what I've done here. So as you can see there, I've gone off the paper quite a bit. I've got lots of intersecting lines with this and some shaded areas where I've turned the graphite stick um, the, the charcoal okay so this part of the exercise when we come back to this this time I'm going to imagine something I'm going to bring something into my mind's eye okay so I'm going to rely on my memory banks of um, to to imagine to, to bring a figurative object into my mind okay now I'm going to imagine an elephant okay I know what an elephant looks like I've never seen, well, no, I have seen one in, in real life. I've seen one at the zoo. Um, I've seen pictures of elephants. So I kind of know what an elephant looks like. So 
This time I'm going to use exactly the same piece of paper as well. I'm not going to change paper. I'm going to take up my graphite stick. It could be anything actually. It could be a compressed charcoal. It doesn't really matter. Okay. And again, I'm just going to try and take a, a, a journey inwards. Just kind of relax. And I'm going to bring into my mind an elephant, an elephant's head. I can see it vividly in my mind at the moment. Okay, but this time I'm going to gently close my eyes. I'm going to resist the urge to look down to check to see what I'm doing because I really just want this to be pure interpretation of whatever is in my mind's eye. I'm not looking at a photograph. I'm, I'm not I haven't obviously I haven't got an elephant in the room to work from so um, I'm just going to put my graphite stick down and I'm just gonna now I'm visualizing an ear and I'm visualizing a head kind of to the side so I'm imagining it's you know the top of the skull coming down and the elephant's eye which has lots of creases and bags around it. So I'm imagining that as a bit of a spiral that goes in and then I want to come down to the side of the face and maybe maybe there's a big tusk there maybe I don't know again this is just purely what I'm imagining okay and I want to, maybe the trunk is gonna be Okay. Right. Okay. Well, obviously, nothing like an elephant, but I can see elements of it. This ragged ear, this eye shape. This maybe would be would have been the the trunk that I was envisaging. Okay. So I'm going to go in again. I'm going to try and visualise the elephant again and the, this time I'm visualising it whole from the back. And again, one of the main sort of features of an elephant is the massive ears. I think African elephants have the really, really big ears. And then I want some sort of suggestion of the trunk. Okay. Okay. So, there I have my first auto drawing okay so at the moment it as I say it doesn't look like anything it's not meant to look like anything it's just a really fun exercise to really loosen you up and connect you with those parts of your psyche that you don't you're not used to connecting with um, your subconscious mind is something that operates when you're not conscious um, and you know it has lots of information that comes out in your dreams um, so if you can kind of tune into this and get used to drawing like this and just allowing yourself to go with the process it's really really good for you because you'll find that when you do sit down to draw from a still life setting or you might want to draw from a person 
um, you'll find it slightly easier. Your mark making will just become so much more expressive and you'll just be able to um, respond more emotionally and intuitively to your subject. Okay, now moving on from this, what you might want to do, what you can do and what's quite fun to do with these is to apply some colour. So I'm just going to take my coloured pencils and just work some lightly over. I've just picked up a pink here. And I'm just going to have a bit of fun just colouring in some of these shapes made by the intersecting lines. So that what I end up with is something that's quite, quite abstract looking. It's kind of really free and it, as I say it's just a really enjoyable exercise. You know, and you don't have to colour in absolutely everything. You can just be selective about what you choose. I've got some pinks and purples. so I hope you enjoyed that I hope you enjoyed watching I hope you give it a go because I think obviously it's something that you do need to um, do in it's best if nobody's around um, because it just allows you to tune in a little bit more and to not feel like you've got to respond to people um, and also, you know, it's not something that we're used to doing is to kind of fall completely silent and start doing deep breathing. So it's probably something that you would feel more comfortable doing if you if you were able just to um, go into a room on your own and do it um, rather than do it with husbands and wives and children and grandparents around. It just allows you a bit of time for yourself as well, which is incredibly important, particularly for creativity. You know, it's very difficult to respond to things authentically um, from an emotional standpoint if you're kind of you feel like you're being kind of watched, if you like, you know. One of the hardest things I've found, um, in fact, I find it really difficult to um, paint and draw with an audience, which is kind of tricky given that I'm an art teacher. Um, but I do, I find it, I find it really difficult. My best work comes from when I'm completely on my own, thinking my own thoughts and just able to respond to things in my own way, in my own time. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there. There you have it. So, auto drawing, give it a go. I'm sure you'll really enjoy it. And stay safe and well everybody, and I'll see you next time.